What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Philippe that is currently bringing lots of impacts to the, everywhere in the Lesser Antilles as well as the Virgin Islands and potentially Puerto Rico in the next few hours. We're looking at still a potential area of interest, maybe in the Caribbean Sea, maybe in the Eastern Atlantic, maybe even in the Gulf of Mexico down the road. So we'll have to continue to pay attention to all of that as we get into this. But first, we're going to go ahead and show you what we have with going, going on with Philippe as of right now. Here's the situation. Currently, winds are at 45 miles per hour. The minimum central pressure is 1,004 millibars. It's currently moving northwest at 10 miles per hour. And its current location is 19 degrees north, 64.4 degrees west, about 55 miles northeast of St. Thomas. This thing uh, this thing made landfall on uh, Barbuda last night. There is still a tropical storm watch in effect for the British Virgin Islands. <laughs> They did, the government of Antigua and Barbuda discontinued the tropical sto uh, storm warning for Anguilla. As of right now, we can go ahead and pull up the archive to kind of give you an understanding of what's been really going on. At least for what we've been uh, we've been seeing, Felipe last night at at 6 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time made landfall in Barbuda with winds of 50 miles per hour and a pressure of 999 millibars. As of right then, and then it kind of started mo uh, meandering and moving through the Leeward Islands as this was bringing tons and tons of heavy rainfall and a lot of flooding as we continue to take a look at this. So that's what we have really going uh, going on. Tropical storm force winds still extend outward 175 miles from the center, primarily to the east and southeast of the center of circulation. The U.S. Virgin Islands and northeastern Puerto Rico is still expected to get 2 to 4 inches, 1 to 4 inches of the Leeward Islands and northern Windward Islands, 1 to 4 inches, 4 to 8 inches with maximum amounts of 12 inches in Anguilla southward to uh, Montserrat, um, uh, Mont uh, Montserrat, including St. Kitts and Nevis, as well as the British Virgin Islands. Yeah, 4 to 8 inches of rain. That's going to definitely cause a lot of flash flooding down the road. So that's what we have going on with Felipe as of right now. Felipe, Philippe. Pretty much the same situation. Here's what we have. Philippe Center has become exposed to, uh, to the northwest of the deep convection. Invisible satellite images this morning suggest that it's lost defini definition. This is confirmed by the crew of ongoing Air Force Hurricane R Hunter aircraft, which in in indicates that the center is a, a, a center of uncertainty of about 10 nautical miles. The plane has only measured uh, peak eight light level winds of 41 knots and SFMR values of 35 to 40 knots. So they're holding it at 40 uh, at knots or 45 miles per hour we can actually go ahead and take a look at the aircraft reconnaissance right now it's just kind of been wobbling all over the place so yeah Philippe is not very centered it's not very organized at all but it is still bringing lots and lots of impacts to a lot of areas so we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it here's the eye of what we're looking at right here and if we go ahead like they're only finding like barely anything over four, like they found stuff over 40 knots for sure but it's barely like it's like 41, 42 knots at SFMR values. Flight level winds are barely cracking 35 anymore. So it's just not looking go uh, good for this. It's just getting more disorganized by the hour. However, this still is gonna. It still is a threat to a lot of the lesser Antilles. So we still need to continue to monitor it as time continues to go on. Here's the cone. There's a tropical storm watch right now for the British Virgin Islands. It is expected to remain a tropical storm through its lifetime and it is expected to start approaching Bermuda and then potentially towards Nova Scotia and uh, as a potential post-tropical cyclone at this current time. We'll go ahead and go back to the discussion. This is what they're looking at. They're looking at this thing now strengthening up to 65 miles per hour. It was at like 90 or 85 like yesterday when we reported this on Pat's Path Predictor. Now it's down to 65 I think the absolute max that Philippe could actually get up to is 80 miles per hour, primarily due to the conditions that this thing still has to go through. But at the same time, time is absolutely running out for it to start strengthening. It's just kind of been meandering throughout the Atlantic Ocean. It's been making a very, very weird path, to say at the very least. If we go ahead and show you the graphics, here's the wind history. Basically, it starts moving to the west northwest, then the west, and we start seeing an expansion of wind field. Then moves, they take a hard nosedive to the southwest, and then just kind of been consistently moving north north uh, west northwest at that point. So, definitely something to monitor as time continues to go on. Uh, everywhere from Guadeloupe to north of Dominica, all the way to the Virgin Islands, have gotten tropical storm force winds as well as a lot of flooding in association with that. 
So that's what we have going on with Tropical Storm Philippe at this at this time. A lot of stuff is really going on as we continue to speak. And as we get into this active weather period, be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting catered to your local area. For more information on them, be sure to check out their website in the link description down below. And be sure to use the code PREDICTOR for 50% off your first month. They've been helping me make these videos for the last few weeks, so I really appreciate all the help they've been doing. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get to the operational models because that's what everyone's here for. Here's the operational models that we have, the European, GFS, Navgem, Icon, all of the above. So we'll go ahead and start with the European. The European's kind of just showing Philippe, just kind of staying where it is, just intensity-wise, maybe weakening a little bit, and just kind of meandering in the Atlantic Ocean, bringing some impacts to Bermuda before approaching Atlantic Canada as a 988 millibar system, most likely post-tropical by this point, while bringing some imp more impacts to like Maine and, and New Brunswick before merging into that low-pressure system over there. So definitely something we need to monitor as time continues to go on. As for future tropical development well we have more models that are indicating more tropical development in the eastern pacific as well as some potential in the caribbean sea as well as in the western gulf of mexico so we'll go ahead and show you those very quickly Next model run we're showing you is the GFS. This has been a very interesting model to say at the very least. GFS is kind of having this stagnate and then finally starting to strengthen in the next three days. There's a high pressure system kind of blocking it from moving it to the east. And that's why we're looking at a potential impact area for Nova Scotia. Although the GFS, interestingly enough, there's another uh, low pressure that builds up, potentially engages in a Fujiwara effect. And that kind of just launches it more and more to the east at that point and potentially keeps this out to sea towards the eight and then heads towards the Azores and mainland Europe at that point. So that's why I've been paying attention to. I've also been paying attention to something else that's been going on. Potential tropical development in the eastern Pacific Ocean has been something I've been keeping an eye on. And the reason I've been keeping an eye on it is because the last several runs of the GFS have this thing making landfall in Mexico, moving into the Gulf of Mexico, and then from there starts to organize and potentially intensify into a tropical system. As it's, approaching, as it's approaching the Gulf Coast. So that's definitely something we need to keep an eye on. Keep in mind, by the time this thing does start to develop, it's like five days out. By the time it enters the Gulf, it's about nine. So there is still quite a bit of uncertainty going into this. However... I, however, I've been looking at this, and other models are corrobor corroborating this, so this is something to monitor for everyone in the Gulf Coast. This could be a potential threat down the road. So that's what we have with the 0Z GFS. I think even the yeah even the 12Z kind of is showing that as well to some extent, having this thing making landfall in Mexico, then just emerging off uh, the Gulf Gulf Coast right here as a more weaker system for sure, but it's still there. That's uh, that's the thing I'm trying to show you. Next model we're showing you is the CMC. CMC has been very very consistent all uh, this week. The CMC is showing Felipe just or Philippe just kind of organizing, developing after it lo mo leaves the Leeward Islands into a category one hurricane before being moved towards Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, bringing lots of impacts before merging with another low pressure system. And then it has uh, tropical development in the eastern Pacific that starts to really quickly organize and develop in the next 72 hours. Then it makes landfall off the coast uh, on the southern coast of Mexico and then move and then it kind of moves to the north uh, to the north over the Gulf. At this point, that's the low pressure system we're paying attention to right here. Enters the Gulf of Mexico and starts uh, potentially organizing and developing even further on that flank right there. So that's the CMC model we'll have to pay attention to. So th th this hurricane season is definitely not over yet, and this is really exacerbated as to why. Next thing we're showing you is the Navgem model. Navgem's been pretty interesting. Navgem has Philippe just organizing to Category 1 strength before moving out to Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. Lind over there before emerging with a new frontal low. And it's also showing a similar situation with a low pressure system organizing and developing in the Gulf of Mexico and then really starting to ramp up in intense uh, ramp up in intensity after seven days or so. That's the Navgem model we have pulled up. And they're also showing a, one last potential Cape Verde system coming off the coast of Africa and quickly developing. So definitely something to watch for sure. I don't know if I trust that 100%, but we'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go. Last model we're showing is the Icon. Similar situation with 
everything else with Philippe. And then it starts to show uh, another main development region set up at this current point. Potentially, it starts to show some gradual organization and development, as well as an org- as well as a more a potential organized Gulf of Mexico threat down the road. So those are all the operational models we have right here at this current time. The next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the conditions as of right now. Here is the conditions we have pulled up. This is the global sea temperature map right here. Global sea temperatures across the Gulf of Mexico have been cooling. They're down to 29 uh, degrees Celsius or about uh, 84 degrees Fahrenheit in the northern half of the Gulf. Then you have 30 degrees Celsius in the southern half, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And that spreads from the southern Gulf all the way to the main development region. Yeah, these waters in the Caribbean, the MDR, and the rest of the Atlantic Basin are showing really no signs of weakening or cooling down at this current time. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as time continues to progress, especially if we see more and more tropical systems kind of as a last-ditch resort, uh, kind of absorb these Caribbean. Caribbean waters because all season the Caribbean waters have been pretty much untapped and they're still very very warm very 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 energized and they can definitely still lead to very 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 rapid and potentially explosive intensification like we saw with Hurricane Lee a few weeks ago OHC kind of corroborates this OHC Across this area, we're seeing a lot of 200 OHC values across the Western Caribbean, more or a lot of 150 OHC values across the entire Caribbean, and even in parts of the main development region, we're seeing areas of 150 OHC. So this is no small matter that we're looking at. This is quite a serious situation that we're paying attention to, especially if something does develop in the Gulf of Mexico this time around. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. Last thing we're showing you here is the wind shear. Wind shear in the in the Caribbean Sea has been fluctuating off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on, and off and on. And it's just like and kind of going up and down as we've been seeing all season. And we're also seeing a, a more fluctuation of, of shear across parts of the Atlantic Ocean as well as in the Eastern Atlantic as well. So we'll have to continue to monitor this as time continues to progress. And if we can go ahead and briefly show you the shear forecast from the European model at this current time, here's the 200 to 850 millibar wind shear. The wind shear weakens considerably quite a bit over the last next seven days. So this is something we need to monitor as time continues to progress. And this could open the door for one last time of a lot of areas of development. Keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Well, with that being said, we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.